Well, good morning. Good morning. So good to see you this morning. Would you stand with me if you can? It's, uh, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here this morning. And we want to open up in prayer and just uh, allow the presence of Jesus to be here. And uh, remember the Wesley family and uh, for their loss. And I'll tell you what, we had a, we had a good funeral. If you can have a good funeral, well, we had one yesterday. So. We, had a, yeah, we had a going home party. We had church is what we did. So it was good. And so, but remember the family and everything. I know Brother, Brother Robert and them, are, their family are still in. So they're spending some time with them just, just, uh, just going through that process. So that process takes time. Uh, but remember them. Remember all those who are sick and all those who can't be here because of work or out of town, whatever. But let's just uh, open up in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Jesus, God, we are, we are so thankful once again to be able to come into your presence, God. We thank you for each and every one that's here. God, you have made us a body, a family. And we thank you for our family. Be with those that are sick, Lord. We speak life and health into their bodies. God, be with those that have to work or whatever situation. The reason why they're not here, Lord, just let them know that they're loved and that we, we miss them. And we ask that you would strengthen them, God. We ask that you would be with us today. We thank you for your presence. We love your name. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Sing with us. in that home above, trusting fully, trusting in my Savior's love, doing what I can for heaven's holy dark. I'm getting ready to leave this world, well, I'm getting ready to leave this world of sorrow, I'm getting ready for the gates of birth, keeping my record
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> to bring and that is why I sing all my joy with you I'll share I will take a trip in a good old gospel ship and angels sailing through the air I will take a trip in a good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky I will down and sing comes in, I'll leave this world of sin, and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in a good old gospel ship, I'm going far beyond the sky. I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring, while I'm bidding this world goodbye. If you're ashamed of me, to be, for with Christ I am an heir. If too much fault you find, you'll sure be left behind, I go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take the train in the good old gospel ship, I'm going far beyond the sky. I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring. While I'm bidding this world goodbye Oh, I'm going to take a trip In the good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky I'm going to shout and sing Until the heavens ring While I'm bidding this world goodbye I have found the way.
at you, he sees perfection, right? Amen. The Bible says that Jesus has made us perfect. And I'm thankful that we are perfect in his eyes. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, you're perfect. <laughs> Some of you guys aren't looking at your neighbor right now. But the truth of the matter, the Bible is very clear that the Bible makes us perfect in God's sight. Amen. You guys sing this song with me, you know This the world will bow down and say you are done. And every man will bow down and say you are the king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Says King of Glory.
So good to see you this morning. Let me make just a couple of announcements for you. Uh, if you notice, we're starting uh, to start piling up diapers over here. On the 19th of, of October, we're going to be doing a diaper giveaway. Everybody say diaper giveaway. Diaper giveaway. So uh, we've got we've got the University of Arkansas is joining with us. We've had Sam's Club join with us. We have Walmart joining with us. We have a lot of people that are going to be helping us out and everything. And I want you to be a part of that as well. Even if you can just buy a box or just some wipes. This is what we want to do. We want to be light to darkness. We want people to know that Jesus loves them, right? There's a church here that loves them. And that we want to try to help them any way we can. Now, I know we're, we're not an extravagant, just a massive church, so we can't do all kinds of stuff. This is what we can do. We can do what we can, right? And so I'm thankful. Thank you for your giving to that. Thank you for, uh, for supporting that. Thank you for your giving to the church and, and seeing that our mission to reach this neighborhood goes out and that we can make a difference. Because you know what? The main calling of our church is to be light to darkness, right? Is to bring people into the kingdom. And so I'm thankful for that. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, you're a part of that. You are a part of that. And again, thank you uh, for all of you that could make it to the funeral for Brother Daryl yesterday. We had a good time. And uh, I'm telling you what, every question he's ever had has been answered. I'll tell you, you know, the best definition of death that I ever had was given to me was this. You ever, you ever, when you were young, do you remember when you were sick and you went to bed sick? You had fever in your body and you were just sick and you went to bed. You couldn't really go to sleep, right? But you tossed and turned and you were just for some reason, whatever it was, that you finally fell asleep. But that next morning when you woke up, you were in your parents' bed. And the reason why is because in the middle of the night, your mom or your dad came and got you without you knowing. And they carried you into their bed and they put you in their bed and you woke up in their bed. And you know, that's what death is. Death is when we all are sick, right? We're all in sin. We're all messed up. This is a bad world that we live in. But when it's time, our time to go, that Jesus comes and picks us up from our bed and he takes us to his place, right? Yeah. That's exactly what that is. And I'm glad. This is what I'm glad of. I'm glad that Daryl knew Jesus because that changes everything. Amen. That's all that matters is that he knew Jesus. He had a relationship, a personal relationship with him. And he will be missed like Brother James was talking about. Hey, this morning I want to talk to you about the importance of relying on God. The importance of relying on God. How many of you guys get frustrated sometimes when you can't get things done on your own? You ever feel that way? We've got a couple honest people, okay? You ever get frustrated whenever you don't have what you need to get it done? You, there's, no, there's not enough money at the end of the month. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, right? But it's important that we learn that actually strength comes when we put our reliance on God. Amen. It makes life easier when you realize that he actually does care for you. Even those little minute things, he cares about those things. Amen. And so I want to talk to you this morning. And here's why. Because when you rely on God, that is where true strength, everybody say true strength. True strength. That's where true strength is found. Relying on God brings true strength. Because God's strength is perfect in our weakness. Amen. Let me say that again. God's strength is perfect in our weakness. Amen. We often find ourselves, I find myself sometimes struggling just to keep keep up, right? This world is such a fast-paced world. We talked about that last week. We're a fast food nation, right? And sometimes we, we find ourselves just, we struggle just to keep up. I mean, there's things that are even, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a young guy, I guess. There's things that are that are like, computers and all these apps and all this kind of stuff that I don't even know what's going on anymore just because you you turn around you wake up the next morning and something's <laughs> new there's something new in the world and it's expected that we keep up with what's going on but God tells us in scripture that his strength is made perfect in our weakness as a matter of fact in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 12 it says but he has said to me my grace everybody say grace grace my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Power is perfected in weakness. In other words, God's grace, he has enough grace for all of your mistakes. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad that God's grace covers all of your mistakes? We would be naive to say this morning that none of us, there's not a single person that doesn't have skeletons in our closet, right? We've all made mistakes. The truth is, if we knew everything about each other, we probably wouldn't like each other very much, right? Right? But His grace is sufficient. He can cover our sin. He can cover our mistakes. And I'm thankful for that. But it also says that His power is perfected in weakness. In other words, 
rather than boast about our weakness, we understand that the power of Christ, it dwells inside of us. And because of that, we can overcome the issues that we face because we simply rely on God. On God. In other words, this. Paul reassures us that when we feel weak and inadequate, it's actually an opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. opportunity. For God's strength to shine through. Have you ever noticed that when things go wrong, when you finally make the decision to rely on God, that's when everything starts going right again? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? When you, yeah. As long as you try to do stuff on your own, you're going to make mistakes, right? You're going to make bad choices because you, your, your vision or your perspective is not what God's perspective is. And so you're going to make bad choices. But when you finally give up and say, I'm just going to rely on God, it seems like that's when he begins to move. So my question is, is why don't we do that more often, right? When things go on, why don't we just give it up immediately instead of trying to do stuff on our own? Here's the thing. God's strength enables us. Everybody say enables. enables. God's strength, his strength enables us to overcome all of the challenges that we face. In other words, relying on our own strength can often lead to frustration, right? You ever been frustrated when you try to do stuff on your own? It leads to frustration and it leads to exhaustion. I can't tell you how many people that I talk to today, they just say, I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired of the life that's going, you know, I'm just tired of having to get up in the morning, go to work, just all of this kind of stuff. Why? Because we try to do everything on our own and we give up our strength and it just begins to drain us. Anybody in this room would be honest and say, I feel drained. It's exhaustion. It's exhausting to try to think about this. But this is what it says on Isaiah 40, 31. It talks about tapping into the strength far greater than our own. This is what it says. But those who wait upon the Lord. Everybody say, wait. wait. But those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength, right? They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weary. What does that mean? Yeah. Isaiah is telling us, if you will just wait on God, like last week we talked, if you will allow God's timing to work in your life, if you will put on the mindset that whatever goes on in your life, you're going to rely on Him, you're not going to get tired. Yeah. You're going to be able to overcome this world. You're going to be able to walk and not faint. In other words, it's important that we understand that the vivid picture that Isaiah paints on how God's strength renews us, it empowers us, and it enables us to, cha to face challenges with resilience that's not our own. Amen. There is something about relying on God, understanding that His strength is enough to overcome. As a matter of fact, when you begin to rely on God, no longer exhaustion is the middle part of your life, right? No longer is exhaustion a part of your life. doesn't mean that you're not going to get frustrated sometime or you're going to question God. But when you put your strength or your reliance on God's strength, then you understand that relying on God, not only does it increase, it's made perfect in your weakness, not only does it help you overcome challenges, but when you rely on God, it strengthens your faith. Have you guys, we could probably just make a line up here of all of the testimonies about how God has come through. Yes, amen. Why is that? Because when we used to have those old time testimony services, you know what would happen? It would encourage people. It would renew their faith in God because they said, you know what? If God can do it for them, he could probably do it for me too. Amen. And so relying on God, it actually strengthens our faith. Psalms 1832 says this, the God who encircles me with strength and makes my way blameless. In other words, God will surround you with his strength. You don't have to rely on your own understanding. You don't have to rely on your own senses, but you can experience his strength in your life. You can trust him, and when you do, you begin to grow. Amen. Your faith begins to grow. Your faith is strengthened, and it becomes the foundation. And so you can look back on situations in your life Every one of us in this room have had a situation, and hopefully every one of us have had a situation where we can look back and say, God did it. Amen. God did it. And if he did it back then, you remember the old song, and he'll do it again, right? Amen. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it back then, how much more will he do it for you now? Amen. Because he cares for you, right? He cares for you. Look at your neighbor and say, God cares for you. Cares for you. He loves you, right? He loves you. But relying on God, it brings true strength. Here's another thing. Relying on God provides, it provides guidance. 
It provides guidance. In other words, God's guidance leads us on the right path. So I said it earlier in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says trust. Everybody say trust. Trust, trust in the Lord, right? With all of your heart. We probably have this memorized. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, what? In all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In other words, he will set your path straight. In other words, he will keep you focused when you rely on him. It encourages you and it puts you on the right path. When you learn how to listen to God's voice on a daily basis... It's a lot easier to make a straight path than listening to all the other voices in your life going from here over to here over to there. Right. That is what is exhausting, yeah. is trying to listen. We said this last week. Everybody has a plan for your life, right? Yeah. Everybody. Have, you ever told somebody your problems and they said, well, this is what I would do, right? Everybody's got a plan for your life. But God is the ultimate, and he understands, and this is what he does. He promises to guide us and to make our path straight when. Everybody say when. When. When we trust him, right? Amen. His guidance is infallible. In other words, it's not wrong. His guidance is infallible. Unlike ours, who is, we often have a flawed understanding. We look at the world in a small picture, right? The Bible says that we look through a glass dimly. Yeah. In other words, we don't know everything <laughs> that's going on in this world, but I am so thankful that God does, and he promises to guide our path based on his understanding, right? It's not based on our circumstances. It's based on what he is and who he is and what he has done. So it leads us to guidance. Relying on God uh, basically leads us to his will. It leads us to his will. Romans 12, 2 says, and do not, we said this morning, do not be conformed to this world, right? But be ye transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean to be transformed? It's more than just a change. What is transformation? When transformation, you know, we can go change clothes, right? And you can look different, but you're still you. But when you're transformed, when something is transformed, you guys ever watched uh, those TV shows where they take those old houses and they fix them up real nice? Yeah. Like if you walked in there, like you wouldn't even know that that was the old house. Why? Because changing is like putting paint on the wall, right? Where transformation is like a complete remodel. It's like a complete remodel where everything goes perfectly where it's supposed to go. I mean, they make those houses look really nice, right? Even down to the bowls on the dining table. They make it, like, perfect. But that's what happens is when you rely on God, your mind is transformed. There's not just paint on the walls of your mind. It's completely changing the algorithm on how you process information. Did you know it's scientifically proven that it takes you 13 weeks to change your mind? In other words, if you believe something in your mind so desperately that it takes you 13 weeks for your mind to build new neuron pathways in order to change that process on how you think. Wow. That's why when you talk to people and they say, well, you know, I'm just a poor sinner saved by grace. And you can't convince them sometimes that they are a child of God. God wants to take care of them. Why? Because their mind is thinking that and it takes time for that to happen. Here's the, the benefit, though. When you rely on the Holy Spirit, that 13 weeks can happen in no time. Amen. The Holy Spirit can renew your mind and he can transform the way that you process information. I don't think we understand, but that's a daily process. That's like something every day, the way that you process information. When you trust in God and when you rely on him, okay, when you're not conformed to this world, in other words, you don't think the way the world thinks, okay, and you transform your mind, okay, you transform your mind and you renew your mind, it says that you may prove what the will of God is, okay, which is good and acceptable and perfect. How many of you guys know that God has a plan for your life, but not only that, he has a perfect plan for your life? There's a difference between having a plan and still facing things, but he has a perfect plan for your life. He knows you up and down, left and right. He knows the very deep insides of your heart, and he has a plan, and his plan is perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, his plan is perfect. For you, right? Listen to me. Relying on God provides assurance and security. I am thankful that we are a blessed nation to the fact where our kids and, and the people that are close to us, like, for example, London and Libby, they don't ask if we're going to have food on the table in the, you know, for supper. We are a blessed nation, right? We are a blessed nation. In the same way, God provides us security, right? 
When we know that God will always come through in our situation, when things come up to us and we are faced with battles, they don't affect us like they used to, right? In other words, when you're facing things, you can still sleep good at night because you know that God is on the scene. You know that God cares for you. So it provides assurance and security, and it comforts you in times of trouble. We just had times of trouble. Our nation is a time of trouble, right? Yeah. Amen. Our nation, our schools, our government, our world is in a time of trouble. But in times of trouble, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and insecure. But Psalms 46.1 says, God, everybody say God. God. God is our refuge and strength, Amen. our very present help in trouble. He is your refuge. You have to learn how to rely on him. You have to learn the importance of relying on God. This assurance provides comfort, right? Knowing that no matter how dire our circumstances, God is with you, offering refuge and strength. There's something about being in the presence of God where you can sleep good at night. There's something about being in the presence of God whenever somebody tells you something that's not good news, you're not immediately, fear doesn't immediately fill your heart because you know that God is in control. Amen. You yeah. know that God is going to take care of you no matter what. He yeah. promised that he would, right? Yeah. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He knows what's going on in your life. See, listen, relying on God, not only does it give us assurance and security that when things go wrong, that he's there, but it also gives us assurance in our eternal home. Amen. We had that funeral yesterday. Again, we almost had church. We did have church in a way. Why is that? Because funerals can be such a sad moment because you know that the people that you that are in that casket, you're never going to see again. But for us as Christians, it's a celebration because we know that he is not in that casket. She is not in that casket. That is, that's just a housing for a temporary, right? And so we have eternal security. Why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. We now have eternal life, right? Amen. And that brings peace. That brings peace inside of us. We relearn how to rely on God because we know that our security in God extends beyond our own immediate concerns, right? right. To our eternal life. This is what John 10, 28 says. Jesus says, I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. No one. That promise ensures that our relationship with God is secure and it's eternal. Can you guys know you, that you're going to live forever? Amen. This world is not your home. The things that you face today, you're not going to face later on in life, right? right. Yeah. The things that you face, one of these days, God's going to wipe every tear. There's going to be no more pain. We talked about that a little bit yesterday at the funeral. But here's the thing. God promises that if you accept him and that if you yield your life to him, that you have eternal life. Nobody can take it away except you, right? The government can't take that away. Thank God. You have eternal life. And I want you to understand something this, this morning as I close. God's promises are reliable. God's promises are reliable. Have you ever been promised something by a human only to be let down? Have you ever been told something and somebody said, I'll do it only to be let down? Hey, the people that are closest to us can hurt us the most because of unreliability sometimes. We get busy, right? We are busy people. We don't have the resources. We don't have the strength. We become exhausted. But God's promises, everything that he said in the Bible is reliable. Amen. Do you remember we talked a, a couple, it's been a couple months ago, but there are two things that are immutable according to Hebrews 10. That when God, he looked down on earth and when he couldn't make a covenant with anybody else, the Bible says that he swore by himself. In other words, he made a promise with himself. And there's two things. Do you remember what they are? His oaths and his promises. God made an oath and he made promises. And those two things are unchangeable. That's why it's important when you open up your word of God that you find things that God has promised you. God has promised you healing. God has promised you peace. God has promised you prosperity. He's promised this stuff to you. And we have to understand that his promises are undeniably accurate. Amen. Second Peter 3 says this, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient. Everybody say patient. patient. 
So he's not slow at his promise, but he's patient. Why is he patient? Why is God patient? If you keep reading that verse, this is what it says. Not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Amen. In other words, you know this world is messed up. It's crazy. But God hasn't forgot about us. Why is he holding off? Because there are more people that need to come into the kingdom of God. He knows that we can endure. He gives us the strength to endure. And he's saying, just hold on just a little bit longer because there's a couple other people. Some of you guys have loved ones that need to come to Christ. And God is saying, let's wait. Everybody, I mean, we say it, right? We say, hey, I can't wait. I wish the Lord would come tomorrow. I wish the Lord would come today. But God, on the, on the other hand, is saying, there's a couple more. I've got some more that need to come into the kingdom. So hang on just a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you my strength so you can hang on a little bit longer because you have parents, you have kids, you have brothers and sisters that need me, and I want to be the Lord of their life. Yeah. And so his promises, even though they endure, sometimes we feel like they're slow, right? We, we feel like sometimes that God is holding out on us, but that's not the sake. The case is that God is holding out. He's a little patient, a little more than what we would expect because there's other people that need to come into the kingdom of God. When you rely on God, it means that you trust in his reliable promises. Amen. It's not just a promise, but it's a reliable promise. It's called trustworthiness, right? Trustworthiness. And even when our circumstances seem uncertain, we have the ability to get on our face before God and to cry out to him and he hears you. Amen. He hears you when you go through these things. So we have to embrace that we have to depend on God. How many of you guys understand? I, I want you to understand something. When you walk out of this, these doors, you have to rely on God. Amen. Amen. Times are coming. Yeah. It's going to get worse. Things are going to get bad. And you're going to have to learn to rely on God. You're going to have to learn through the circumstances that he does see your needs. He has a bigger perspective. He knows what's going on. If we will trust him, he will take care of you. He always does. It's important that we, rely on, that we rely on God. And I can't overstate that enough. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. His guidance leads us to his will. And his promises provide us with security, knowing that we are okay, that he has us, right? He has us in his hands. You remember the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He really does. But he relies on our faith in him that we can give him our circumstances because sometimes God doesn't take your circumstances. He expects you to give him your circumstances. And sometimes we hold on to those circumstances, right? We tell God, hey, God, I need you here, but we won't give it to him. We hold it. And when he tries to take it, we're like, no, 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 I want to keep it right now, but I really need your help, God. That's what we do, is it not? We want God to help us, but then when he tries to, we're like, no, no, I got this. I'm good. But we have to learn in everything that we do, we have to rely on God. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Amen. I was thinking about this driving, uh, driving to work just the other day about relying on God. And I was listening to a story about, about a situation that happened. And, you know, this is what I found in life. That everybody makes their own choices, okay? We all, the Bible says the just shall live by but if you go back to Habakkuk in the original language, it says the just shall live by his faith. His faith. In other words, my faith, now right now, because London and Libya are small, my faith sustains them, right? My faith, they are under my covering. But we, are, we all make our own decisions. And you can have 20 people tell you, uh, they can come to you with the word of the Lord and saying, this is what God, you know, this is what God says, this is what God, but you in your faith is what makes the decisions in your life. And so the just will live by your own personal faith. That's why it's important that you develop your faith by walking with God daily. You have to walk with God daily. It would be a very bad idea if you ate lunch today after, after church and then you didn't eat until next week lunch after church. That would be a very bad idea. But sometimes that's what we do when it comes to a spiritual eating, right? Spiritual feeding. We, we come to church and we get fed, but we don't spend time with God. And so our faith, our personal faith, it, it's hindered, right? It's, 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 uh, it's not as strong as what it should be. But the just will live by his faith. And your faith is strengthened when you rely on God. Amen. When you put your trust in him, no matter what goes on, no matter what other people say, 
that you say, you know what, I'm going to let God take care of it. And I am not naive to the fact that there are problems that we have that we face in our very church. There's people in our room, this room today, that are facing things and they want to hold on to what the situation is. They want, they, don't, they want God to intervene, but they don't, right? Because they want to keep it because they're afraid that they'll be hurt or their heart will be hurt or something will happen. But God says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. If we could just see how much God actually cares for you. How much he actually loves you. It's an overwhelming love. One of these days, we're gonna, the Bible says that we're going to walk across and we're going to see Satan himself, the, the father of all lies, and we're going to say, is this the guy? In a sarcastic way, like, really? This is the one that's been giving me problems this whole time? Why? Because God has this overall huge vision about what's going on. He has the bird's eye view, and we're looking through a glass dimly. And the question is this morning, will you rely on God in your situation? If everything's good, that's great. But guess what? Next week it might not be. Next week you might be faced with situations. And you have to make a decision. I'm going to rely on God. Amen. I'm not going to be exhausted about this. I'm going to sleep good at night because I trust Him. Amen. He's always came through. And so I want to pray with you. Would you bow your heads and your hearts? And if you're here this morning and you say, I want to, I, I need something. I, I, Pastor David... I need prayer because there are situations that I'm facing and I have to rely on God, but I want to do it on my own. Would you lift your hand this morning? I just want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you this morning. We have to make a personal decision that we're going to rely on God. It doesn't mean that we don't, like we talked about in Sunday school, we don't bring other people in to give us wisdom, to give us uh, counsel. That doesn't mean that. But we have to make up our own mind, no matter what goes on, that we're going to trust God because strength comes in trusting Him. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus, this morning, I pray for each and every person that is in this room. God, all of us are facing situations, maybe not now, but maybe next week, where we all are going to face situations where we have to put our complete trust in you. And you said to trust in the Lord with all your heart, not just a little bit, but with everything. In other words, if you don't come through, then it's not going to work. But we know that you always come through. And so, God, I ask that you would give ultimate peace to each and every one of us this morning. I ask, I ask that you would give ultimate strength because some of us have just lost our way. Some of us are just tired and exhausted. But, God, I know for a fact that you strengthen us when we trust you. So we put our strength, we put our trust in you, and we know that you take care of us. God, let us understand that because we have accepted you, because you live inside of us, not only can we face the world today, but we have the future promise of eternity with you where there will be no more issues and we'll be completely with you. Let us, let us walk away knowing and being confident in eternal life because of who you are. We thank you for your presence, God. Let the Holy Spirit work in this place. Would you do me a favor? Would you take 30 seconds right now and just pray for your neighbor right now? Come on, pray for your neighbor. Jesus, I pray each and every one that's in here this morning. God, that you would strengthen them. Strengthen their heart. Lord, strengthen their faith. We thank you for the guidance. We thank you that we have the ability to call out your name and you hear us. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Listen, as always, if you need prayer for anything, we want to pray with you, okay? Come find me up here. I will pray with you right now. What is it? Yes. Those of you who weren't here Wednesday night, we have an opportunity on the back of that bull, on the back bulletin board. There are some shirts that we are going to purchase if you'd like to buy one. They're seven dollars. Is that right? They're seven dollars, and all it says is G uh, "America needs Jesus." Just take a look at it. But if you want to sign up, if you let Brother Daniel know, he can get your sizes. We're going to make an order pretty quick. But um, on the back of it, it says "Glad Tidings, uh, Glad Tidings Church." So it's a, it's a great opportunity. You can't find shirts anymore for $7. So uh, it's pretty good. Do me a favor, though. Would you shake hands with as many people as you can? Hug their necks and let them know it's so good to see them. And we will see you guys tonight. We love you.